Hello. Thanks for looking into our channel in which we try to pass on helpful bits of information which I've picked up over the years working for BBC Television. Today I'd like to talk about phantom power. Most of us know that we have to switch it on when we're using capacitor or other powered microphones, but what are we actually doing when we do switch it on? Moving coil or dynamic microphones don't need phantom power because they generate their tiny audio currents by simple mechanical means. A coil vibrates in a magnetic field and that generates the audio signal. But when we come to the more complicated capacitor or condenser mics, there's a problem. They have an amplifier inside them. This is an Audio Technica capacitor mic and you can see the capacitor assembly here. This picks up the sound and is connected with very short wires, these, to the amplifier here. The wires have to be very short with the capacitor mic because the impedance of the capacitor is very high indeed and any wires longer than just a couple of inches would totally degrade the audio signal. That's why we can't just put longer wires on the capacitor pickup device here. So the amplifier has to be supplied with some sort of power to make it work. Some microphones have batteries inside them to supply the power. Batteries go flat, they leak and wreck your mic, they go down in the middle of a recording and they cost money to replace, hence phantom power. I've got this Allen and Heath mixer here on the desk and I think we should have a close look at the XLR connector on the back. Channel, this is channel one here. I've got my voltmeter here to check the pins out. And pin one of this connector is the ground, the earth connection. So I'll connect the negative meter lead to pin one. Now the phantom power switch here is off at the moment. Let's see what happens on pin two in terms of volts, nothing. No voltage. Pin three. No volts. No volts on pin three either. Let's switch the phantom power on now. And back to pin two. Ah, 47.9 volts, nearly 48 volts, which is the standard. And pin three, the same. Now, you might think that this voltage would harm, say, a moving coil microphone connected across pins two and three. But let's check the voltage which is actually across those pins. Pins two and three, no volts. The voltage is only between pins two and three and the ground. No voltage exists across the signal pair. That's why it's called phantom power. So if there's not a direct connection between the signal pair and the ground, then the phantom power will only go where it's supposed to go, which is to power the amplifier. It's got to be sort of siphoned off to power the amplifier. And that's done either by means of a transformer on older designs and some very expensive microphones, or by using capacitors, which block the direct current, the DC from getting to the wrong part of the microphone. This is getting a bit technical. If you need to find out more, there's an excellent tutorial on YouTube at EEV blog 616, How Microphone Phantom Powering Works, where Doug Ford of Rode Microphones explains the technical side extremely clearly. And to recap, the 48 volts is available between pin one, which is ground, negative and pins two and three, positive, two and three on the XLR connector. Pins two and three, of course, carry the audio signal. When you're using microphones with phantom power, do make sure that the cables you're using are proper balanced ones with the standard two inner conductors and the outer screen. If you use, accidentally, an unbalanced cable with only one inner conductor, your microphone won't work and you risk damaging both the microphone and the mixer. And check that your cable is in good condition. Faulty cables can cause havoc with phantom power. Just before I go, I'd like to show you a handy gadget that I've used for years. And it's an XLR connector containing a couple of LEDs and a couple of resistors. And it's called a Bright Eyes. And with this simple gizmo, you can 
instantly check your cables and whether phantom power is actually present. I plug it in and when I switch the... oh it's on already. Hopefully you can see the LEDs coming and going. If only one LED lights then one of the signal wires is either open circuit or it's shorted to something else. If neither lights then either the ground wire is disconnected or the phantom power isn't actually switched on at the mixer. Brilliant. I'll be showing you how to make one of these Bright House gadgets in the next video. I do hope this has cleared up a few of the mysteries surrounding phantom power. See you next time and thanks very much for watching. <laughs>